Hare Krishna. The death squad arrived at the Hare Krishna temple in the early morning hours. Haladini Dasi shouted, Better you kill me than kill them. She gave up her life protecting other devotees without a second thought. Haladini Dasi Sunday, October 3rd is the anniversary of the day in 1990 on which Haladini Devi Dasi was brutally gunned down by an extrajudicial firing squad in war-torn Liberia in Western Africa. The death squad arrived at the Hare Krishna temple in the capital city of Monrovia in the early morning hours and ordered the devotees to come out. Seven devotees, five men and two women exited the temple and filed into the waiting jeep. They were driven a short distance to the Sturton Bridge, where the devotees were forced out at gunpoint and herded onto the sand next to the river. The leader announced that only the men would be killed. Thus, Haladini, a woman, knew she would not be killed. As the leader raised his weapon to fire the first execution volley, Haladini Devi leapt forward and attacked him with her bare hands. She shouted, How dare you kill the devotees of Krishna? Better you kill me than kill them. Haladini was the first to be shot. Haladini was born on January 16, 1949. Her parents gave her the name Linda Jury. Later, she received the name Haladini from her beloved Guru, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Haladini grew up in a suburb of Detroit with her older brother and sister. She had many friends and lots of pets, including a dog named Pepper Doodle and a frog named Herbie. She spent her summers at the family's vacation cottage. Haladini had a happy childhood. In 1969, Haladini married Mike Ryan. Like many young people, Haladini and her husband were searching for the truth and a sense of fulfillment. Mike read different books about Zen, Taoism and other Eastern religions to find answers to their many questions. After Mike read a book called The Wisdom of God by Srila Prabhupada, heard the devotees chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and tasted the free vegetarian food they served, he was convinced that he belonged with the devotees. Mike and Haladini moved into the Detroit temple. At first, Haladini joined the Hare Krishna temple simply because it was what her husband had wanted. Soon, however, Haladini became convinced that the temple was the right place for her. In March 1970, she wrote to Srila Prabhupada and asked for spiritual initiation. Prabhupada replied immediately by letter in which he gave her the name Haladini. In 1972, Haladini and Mike moved to New Vrindavan. Later that year, Mike left New Vrindavan permanently while Haladini chose to stay. New Vrindavan was her home. Soon, Haladini became one of the most popular devotees in New Vrindavan. Another devotee, Manas Ganga Devi Dasi said, I moved to New Vrindavan from Zambia in Southern Africa in 1986 with my husband and four children. Haladini blew my mind. I had never before met anyone who was so blissful. She always had a beautiful smile on her face and she was kind and gentle with everyone, especially the children. Haladini loved the children and encouraged them. For 18 years, Haladini lived and served in New Vrindavan. In December 1989, Haladini made the painful decision to leave the place that was so dear to her and travelled to West Africa. The devotees there so much appreciated Haladini's service and inspiration that she was given the honour of being the regional secretary. In this capacity, Haladini travelled from centre to centre, teaching and assisting the devotees in every possible way. By the time Haladini reached Monrovia, the capital of Liberia, the country was entrenched in a fratricidal civil conflict. 
the warlords of the seven rivaling parties were fighting for power, while there was widespread starvation amongst the people. Seeing the suffering of the people, the devotees of the Hare Krishna temple in Monrovia approached the warlords and arranged to start a food for life program. The warlord who controlled Monrovia, Prince Johnson, agreed to the proposal and the devotees began the free food distribution program. Prince Johnson visited the temple more than once and accepted a copy of Bhagavad Gita as it is from the devotees. As the war intensified, the U.S. government ordered all U.S. citizens to evacuate the country. Haladini had to decide whether to stay in Monrovia or return to safety in Nigeria. True to her nature, Haladini's compassion and mercy for others outweighed any concern she had for her own safety. She opted to stay. Haladini was the only senior devotee in Monrovia and her presence gave solace to the native African devotees who could not leave. On June 14, 1990, Haladini wrote a letter to Radhanath Swami, a friend from New Brindaban. She wrote, There is never a dull moment. Now I am stranded in Liberia, in the middle of a war to overthrow the government. The airport has been seized and they asked all Americans and foreigners to leave the country immediately. American Marines sent six battleships and 2,000 Marines to evacuate the citizens. I'm just going to assist the devotees through the hard times. There's scarcity of food as all the roads are blocked and no supplies can come in. 1,50,000 people fled the country in the last few weeks. Every day, at least 10 people get beheaded and the rebels are still 35 miles from the city. Prince Johnson was killing all suspected friends and soldiers of the former president. Johnson was also known for killing his own men at a faster rate than the enemy. The warlord's reputation for insane murder bothered some of the devotees, who therefore wrote a letter to him saying that he should stop killing people. Johnson, who would not tolerate the slightest criticism of his actions, was angered by the letter. A well-wisher passed a message to the devotees that Johnson was likely to get rid of them. At that time, it was too late to leave the temple and take shelter elsewhere, as many of the buildings in the area were either destroyed or being controlled by Johnson's troops. The devotees stayed at the temple and left their fate in the hands of Lord Krishna. The death squad arrived in the early morning hours. Johnson and his men carried away by jeep the seven devotees who had been captured. Two devotees managed to escape through the back door and climb up trees to take cover. Suddenly, those two devotees heard gunshots from the direction of the bridge. They saw that the captured devotees were being shot by Johnson's men. At daybreak, they came down from the tree. Instead of going to the temple, they walked to the river where they saw Haladini's sari floating on the water. Haladini, along with five male devotees, had become a martyr of the Liberian War. Haladini was the first one shot. When we heard in New Vrindavan that there had been a coup in Liberia and Haladini was trapped, the whole community came together at the Palace of Gold and prayed. Remembers Manas Ganga. When we heard Haladini had been killed, it was a huge shock. We held a memorial service and everyone came because she was one of the most loved devotees in the community. She always had a smile on her face and she was always ready to help out. Nothing was ever a bother for her, said Manas Ganga with a sad smile. For Haladini, taking care of others was always a pleasure. That's what she gave her life for, taking care of others. Hare Krishna